still picture of a value stream map may not fully explain the behavior of the value stream. In some cases, we need to understand its dynamic behavior. To do this, we will convert our Excel value stream map into a Monte Carlo simulator. In the previous article, Excel value stream map, we saw how a complex value stream could be mapped using Excel. We saw the importance of mapping feedback loops such as test repair loops, because they often become the bottleneck for the complete value stream. In this situation, not all items flow along all branches, so we need to calculate the percentage flowing along each branch. This enables us to calculate the cycle for each workstation based on the staffing. Finally, we were able to calculate the ideal staffing to balance the line ensure no workstation cycle is above the average interarrival time, tag time. This we did using Solver. Download this Excel VSM simulator from OneDrive onto your PC by scanning the QR code. We need to measure interarrival times and process times for each process step. To do that, we take 10 measurements of each in Gemba and calculate the average and the standard deviation. We assume that process times follow a normal distribution. The averages we have collected are in column K and the standard deviations in column L. Looking at the inter-arrival times, we notice that the standard deviation is greater than its average, and the shape of the distribution is telling us that it is closer to an exponential distribution. So we will use this assumption in our simulation. We will place the average in K3. A value stream map is not complete without working process, WIP data. The problem with WIP data is that it typically varies widely along time, so a snapshot of the moment we visit the line may be very misleading. In our VSM simulator, we before its workstation, column Q, is calculated each hour based on historical data collected. New WIP is equal to previous WIP plus items processed by previous step minus items processed by this step. On the other hand, uh, the items process in column R are calculated each hour based on average time in column K, time standard deviation in column L, staffing in column M, and taking into account the constraint of an off whip in the previous step. Lead time in column T for each process step is the average time it takes for an item to be processed in that step including the waiting time due to the whip in front of it. Capacity utilization in column U is the average percentage time the workstation has been operating since the start of simulation based on its theoretical capacity. Whip in column Q and capacity utilization in U are shown on bar charts on the right. Elapsed hours simulated are in B2. Products received for repair, products repaired, and products returned without repair are shown in column A. Total values for columns K to U are shown in row 1. K1 is the average value at time, total process time per product. M1 is the total staffing in the line, full time equivalent. P1 is the maximum value of all cycle times. It corresponds to the line bottleneck capacity. P1 <coughs> should be less or equal than K3, which is the tag time. Q1 is the total whip in the line. Products received for repair should still be in the line, whip, or they should have been returned to the customer, repaired or unrepaired. Therefore, received in A3 is equal to whip in Q1 plus repaired in A13, plus return without repair in A8. T1 
is the total lead time in hours, the average lead time seen by the customer, not including the customer contribution. U1 is the overall line capacity utilization. The value add to time to total time rate can be calculated as value add time divided by the total time equal to K1 divided by T1 times 60. In this case, 3.43% of the total lead time of 32 hours seen by the customer, we are adding value. To run the simulator, press F9 to simulate one hour. Keep pressing to run several hours. The counter in B2 shows the elapsed simulated hours. To start simulation with an empty line, press Control key plus R, or press the reset button. This will reset all line whips to zero. To simulate 100 hours, press the Run 100 button. In the top evolution, you can see how all processes and whip values evolve along each hour in the main steps, as well as the evolution of the total lead time. During the first hours, when the line is empty, there is no waiting time along the process, so the total lead time is basically equal to the value of time, one hour. As queues start building up, as shown in the whip chart, waiting time starts to increase in all workstations, and that causes the total lead time to increase to a value of 20 hours, where it seems to stabilize. This means that if we take a snapshot of the line in hour 7, total lead time is 8 times value of time. On the other hand, if we look at the line in hour 45, when stability seems to be reached, lead time is 20 times value of time, and VA divided by VA equal to 19. Non-value of time is made up of all the waiting taking place in front of each workstation. We can see that although the average interval arrival time is 5 minutes, 12 items per hour, three arrivals of more than 30 items each have collapsed receiving, causing an accumulation of 100 items in reception, which has eventually been absorbed by the line. This is a typical case where most of the variability comes from the customer into the arrival times, as seen in the process chart. Tracking this evolution, you can discover unexpected bottlenecks caused by variability that may need to be reinforced with additional stuff. We can also estimate the total lead time we can commit to customers. In this case, if the process is stable, that would be 20 hours minimum. Long lead times seen by the customers are caused mainly by variability. Any reduction in process variation will therefore reduce WIP and therefore variability. In this case, most variation is coming from the arrival times from the customers, so that will be difficult to reduce. These are some of the effects we can detect with simulation. First, accumulation of WIP in front of a workstation due to insufficient stuffing. Low capacity utilization due to excess stuffing. Accumulation of WIP in front of the repair station due to low first pass yield in test, N11. Accumulation of WIP in reception, Q4, due to arrivals above plan. High overall lead time due to excess total WIP in the line. Test first pass yield below plan, which would create a bottleneck both in the test and repair stations. Highly unbalanced line as shown by large differences in capacity utilization. Proportion of products under warranty different to plan, it would require line rebalancing. Repair and functional tests are the two operations which add value and consume most resources in the value stream. So we would expect to have high capacity utilization in both. When there is an increase in arrivals, 
we would expect a queue to form before them, causing an increase in the overall lead time. We don't want other steps which require low staffing to become the bottleneck for the line. So with a small increase in the staffing of those steps which have high capacity utilization, we can make sure they never become the bottleneck. These small increases have increased the overall staffing by one person, and in this way we have reduced their capacity utilization. You can now see that the cycle has been reduced below, well below five, the attack time. The end result will be a reduction of the average overall lead time for the line. We can see the line performance along time now. We want to find out what would be the effect of a drop in test FESPAS yield from the plant figure of 80% to 70%. Looking at the cycle time of both functional test and repair, we notice that they have increased from 5 to 5.4. Therefore, they have become the bottleneck for the total process. In a situation like this, we will analyze the failing items to look for the root cause of the failures to correct it. But on the meantime, <clears throat> if we need to continue the process, we will need additional test and repair capacity, increased test and repair staffing. You can see test and repair loop simulation in test and repair loop. We see we build up before repair and then later on, it builds up before test. A static value stream map is a good start to understand how the value stream behaves. Feedback loops, such as test repair loops, are an essential part of the value stream, so they should be included in the VSM. A snapshot of the WIP situation along the line may not be representative of the normal operation. If the WIP situation is not typical, the NVA calculation will not be correct. The VSM simulator provides a deeper understanding of the process behavior and it enables what if studies to optimize the process. Simulation helps us understand some of the failure mechanisms caused by variation so we can act on the root cause to make real improvements.